What's going on guys, it's Greg Mies Dies, and we are back with another tutorial. This one is the very highly requested Ryder Garnsey replica. If you guys have pockets you want me to replicate, I'm doing a new video every Wednesday. Leave them down in the comments, like this video so we can keep doing more tutorials. It's been a lot of fun getting back to teaching you guys how to string. So let's dig into this one. Uh, Ryder Garnsey, obviously one of the most exciting players in college lacrosse, famous for the dead fish Selly, one of my favorite guys to watch. Can't wait to watch him this summer. Um, he uses the Stallion 700, but he also used the Under Armour Command 2 in college at Notre Dame. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today is in the Under Armour Command 2, um, but this pattern should be transferable to a lot of different heads. So um, at first glance, this pocket looks like it might be a little bit complicated. It's really not. It's really simple. The thing that makes it different is this Shenango top string. So that is a top string I've done some extensive videos about. I'll put a tutorial down in the description so you guys can learn how to do it. If you can string a nine diamond top string, you can string this type of top string. Basically, you put the sides down a little further, skip these two um, tie-ons and you go straight up to the middle and it gives it this really cool v-shape and it has some unique aspects for the pockets channel as far as the pocket it sits right in the middle of the head and it has a really nice long uh really good looking channel because of that shenango top string he's using pretty much all interlocks so a really simple pattern uh, so without further ado let's dive into how to string the sidewall okay so as you can see we've got the top string down on the fourth hole uh, if you have a different head just approximate that same kind of spacing uh, down it might be the the third or the fourth hole so now we're going to start on the sidewall pattern so down into the next sidewall hole we're going to start our loop start so that's going to be the first nine diamond row going through the outside of the sidewall and just looping around through that first diamond and then back around and doing it one more time this is just going to double loop it nice and tight all through the first diamond of mesh and that first sidewall hole nice and tight and then back through the back of the mesh and now we're ready to begin our interlock so this one because you've already got it pulled down so tight and you're starting further down the sidewall it's not necessary to pull the mesh down quite as tightly on the sidewall so for the first one we're just going to skip one sidewall hole and go right down here so skipping one sidewall hole doing an interlock coming to the outside of the sidewall first up through the front of the mesh and then under that loop created right there to create our interlock and you want to pull that down nice and tight and then from here on out we're just going to go straight down the head doing interlocks one after another without skipping any holes and like I said this is still going to create a tight channel because we've already started so far down the head so we're going to do interlocks going down so there's the second one again for an interlock you're just going to go through the outside of the sidewall up from the face to the back of the mesh and then under that loop right there, making sure to pull it nice and tight each time. And we're gonna continue down the head, interlocking as we go, making sure each time to kind of set the mesh to make sure it's not too far one way or the other. One more down. I'm gonna keep going. And then we're gonna do one more. So when it's all said and done, you've got the first loop start and then skip interlock them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row. So after your skip, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row. And you can see we've got that nice channel in the pocket forming. So now we're gonna do a one. So unlike an interlock, we're gonna go from the front to the back of the mesh first and then into the sidewall hole, not skipping any holes, right into the next one. Bunch that up real tight, and then we're gonna go into our final one, which is gonna be our one tie off. So this time you're gonna go from the back of the mesh to the front, and skip a sidewall hole, go in through the second to last one, and do a little loop, tie it off, and you'll have your completed sidewall pattern. All right, so you guys have it, how to string the sidewall. Uh, for the bottom string, he's got a, a little bit longer of a loop on the next nine diamond row after you finish your pattern. If you want it a little tighter, you can tighten that up. If you want to move it down once it'll drift lower, you can do that too. For shooting strings, he's using two nylons and he has a U, but since I know you guys can't use U's, I've got the two straight nylons and then the one straight, and I think this would work really well, give it a little snap, pull it out of the pocket just a little bit earlier. So overall, 
with the Shenango top string, with the shooting string setup, this is a great pocket and what I'd highly recommend you guys try out. So again, let me know in the comments if there's more players you want me to replicate their pocket. I'll try and get as many as possible. Uh, DM me on Instagram at ECDGreg if you want to let me know any you see or you want to send me any, if you guys know some of these players, send me pictures of pockets because sometimes it's hard to get in touch with them. Uh, see you guys next Wednesday. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day. Oh, I'm stuck.